Welcome to VidyaT Plus Video Lectures. In this session you will learn about Introduction to Protection and Switch Gear. This is a, assume that this is the equipment which is deemed to the protector. This is under fault condition. So you already know that under fault condition the uh, current will be going high and the current is being sensed by a current transformer. If the current is high in this current uh, transformer it will immediately give information to the relay where the relay goes from off to on position immediately the relay senses and it gives an alarm sound so from there the information again goes to the circuit breaker where the circuit breaker goes from off to uh, on to off position so immediately the circuit will be tripped off and this uh, equipment will be connected from the main equipment will be connected from the rest of the equipment so, so the fault is being protected on that stage itself so that is the main aim for going for protection switch gear so what there are two types of protection one is the primary protection next is the backup protection here you can see here the difference this let us assume this is the transmission line you can see here there are four relays being connected in your left hand and four relays being connected in your right hand so A, C, B, D and G, I, H, J. So you can see here these two relays which are connected first to the transmission line. So C, D, G, H are called the primary protection relays and here A, B, I, J are the secondary protection relays. The main aim for primary protection relays is if there is any uh, fault in the transmission line first these four relays will operate and it will protect the transmission line that is it will isolate the transmission line from the rest of the system if suppose these relays goes wrong at any case immediately the transmission line has to be protected at any case so these relays a b i j will act so these are called the backup protection relays so uh, this is a first primary protection is called the first line of defense which protects the transmission line at any case when the first line of defense goes wrong the secondary relays operate starts its operation so the protection switch here you can see here these are the main things to be noted here first the relay which we are connecting for protection that should be always you can uh, that the rate of the uh, protection equipment should be less than the total cost of the equipment so you can see here i have mentioned here the when it comes to economy the cost of the protection equipment should be less than the five percentage of the total cost it should not go beyond the cost of the protected equipment so the cost is a very important factor here when concerned with the protection and the type of faults as we know that the type of fault we will see in the later case there are symmetrical faults and unsymmetrical faults so depending on the type of faults we have to put the relay so next is the location of the equipment where we are going to place the equipment for example if you are going to place in an indoor system or in an outdoor system so based on the location of the equipment we have to design the uh, relay and the uh, circuit breaker and the type and rating of equipment so if the rating is high we have go, we have to go for a higher rate of protection so these are the main things to be noted when you are going for a design for a protection equipment next is your types of protection first is your relay backup protection next is your breaker backup protection next is your remote next is your centrally coordinated protection first let us see one by one now first is the relay backup protection you have here already i have said there are two types primary backup protection primary protection and backup protection so relay backup protection is that you have a breaker separately for primary protection and backup protection so the two there are two breakers one for primary and one for backup backup so that is called as relay backup protection next is your breaker backup protection Break, which means that there is same breaker the for primary protection and backup protection there is only one breaker which you are going to employ here that is called as breaker backup protection remote backup protection is it is similar to the breaker backup protection except that the you can see here a word called remote which means that the breaker is going to be placed in a different location apart from your uh, equipment equipment will be placed in a different location and breaker will be placed in a different location next is your centrally coordinated protection which the name itself indicates that all are going to be all the relays are going to be coordinated by a central system so the primary protection you have a separate breaker here for backup protection you have different breakers here where all these breakers are going to be centrally coordinated 
from a main system. So, for example, you can see that in the computers, where many, for, for example, at 10 computers are going to be controlled by a main server, like that it will be controlled. So, these are the types of protection systems. Next, we are going for the qualities of protective relaying, which is very important. So, first quality, you can see that it is a reliability. Next is your selectivity and discrimination. Next is your speed and time. Next, sensitivity, stability, adequateness, simplicity and economy. Okay. So, this can be asked as a separate 8 mark questions also, which is very important. First thing is your reliability. What is reliability? From the name itself indicates, it is the quality of the relay which is going to operate when at a time of fault conditions. So, how reliable it is? That is, if the, if the current goes immediately to a higher condition, will the relay operate or will the relay go off at that time? So, that is sense, that is given by the reliability. Next is your selectivity and discrimination. Selectivity, first it is going to select. For example, if we say that in a system, for example, the current which is to be given is 5 amperes. If the current goes beyond 5 amperes, that should be selected first. Then what it should be done? Discrimination, that is separation. So, immediately if the current goes beyond 5 amperes, the relay goes from off to on position and the circuit breaker goes from on to off position and it will be uh, completely discriminated. Discrimination means separation. So, the health, uh, faulty part is separated from your healthy part that is called as discrimination. The third thing is your speed and time. So, immediately if the fault occurs, the speed of the relay that is operating should be very high. It should sense at a very high speed and immediately the relay should operate at a very higher rate where you can see that the fault clearing time is nothing but equal to the relay time plus circuit breaker time. First the relay will operate and it goes from off to on position and immediately as the relay operates it gives information to the circuit breaker and circuit breaker goes from on to off position. And immediately the healthy part, the faulty part is isolated completely from the healthy part. So, this is called the fault clearing time which should be very, very much low. That is, it, has, uh, it is should be in very nanoseconds so that the faulty part is isolated immediately and the system is being protected. Next is your sensitivity. Where you have the sensitivity factor. The sensitivity factor is given by the ratio of short circuit current to the open circuit current. So, the sensitivity factor should be very high that is immediately as the uh, circuit senses a fault, the relay should immediately get operator. Next is your stability. Stability is depending upon the system. The system which we operate should be highly stable in nature. If suppose any fault occurs, the stability immediately goes down. So, that should be maintained in a system which depends on again, it depends upon the rating of the equipment, location of the equipment and the type of faults. So, the stability of the system should be always maintained at a very high rate. Next is your adequateness. From the name itself, you can say that what is adequateness? Adequateness is how much time the fault occurs within a given amount of time. So, for example, if we take for example 5 minutes time period, how much time the fault occurs in 5 minute time period? So, if the fault occurs for the first time, immediately the relay will sense and circuit breaker will uh, immediately go to uh, off position and the healthy part is, the faulty part is isolated from the healthy part. Immediately after suppose it takes suppose one uh, uh, minute for that and remaining four and I mean this uh, second minute of time immediately the second fault occurs. Will the relay so actually the relay should operate at this time also and should clear the fault. If suppose the relay operates here and the relay does not operate here. Again in the third minute again the uh, a fault comes and the relay starts its operation. Can you say that the relay is highly reliable? No. So, at any point of time, if the uh, fault occurs, immediately the relay should operate at any amount of time it occurs also. That is called as adequateness. How much time the fault comes, immediately the relay should operate and clear the fault condition. Next is a simplicity and economy. So, the relay which we design for a fault, it should be economically, economically uh, it should be uh, simple and in simple nature and is also economically possible. You can see here the cost of the protection equipment which we design 
should be less than the 5 percentage of the total cost of the equipment. So that is how you can design an equipment. The relay which we design should be also simple and it, is a, it also should be cheap in cost. So these are the qualities for your protective relaying. Thanks for watching video tip plus video lectures. Subscribe to us for more videos.